Thank you for the opportunity. My name is uh, Agnes Kalibata. I'm uh, the president of AGRA, an institution that has been working here in Kenya for the last 15 years, supporting uh, smallholder farmers and working with governments and private sector to ensure that we have a viable ecosystem for smallholder farmers to produce food and get themselves out of poverty. Technology is at the core of the work that we do. We recognize that there are opportunities in technology that farmers can use and change their lives. And I'll just give three examples, just on all that we have done. Farmers do very well if they use good quality seed and improved seed. Technology now has helped us to ensure that we have varieties of seeds that can yield three, four, five, even ten times more than the traditional varieties that we use. The work we do is to get these varieties to farmers, work with institutions, ensure that there's a private sector that can take these varieties to farmers. That's just an example. The other example is now every farmer, nearly every farmer, nearly every household has a phone, really ensuring that their technology, that their capabilities within the phone that can help farmers access extension information. We do recognize that lack of extension contributes 30% to loss of yields. So if farmers have access to the right information, they will definitely be able to produce better. The third one is making technologies that have worked in other places, but so far haven't worked in Africa very well, like, like access to mechanization. Not every farmer needs to own a tractor, but using uh, apps and telephones and good systems put in place, like we use get cars, Uber cars, we can actually have Uber tractors that can service farmers and be available to farmers at a, a, an affordable cost to farmers without owning tractors and really make it possible for farmers to, to be able to, to do the work they need to do. So those are the type of technologies, just to give examples, that we harness to ensure that African farmers have access to them. Our strategy now going forward is going to focus really is going to continue focusing on strengthening the capacity of smallholder farmers. But we are taking on another challenge which we feel is extremely important, strengthening the resilience of agricultural systems. We have to be sustainable. Agricultural systems with climate change are extremely challenged. So farmers that work in these systems, businesses that work in these systems are extremely challenged as well, and we are all working against a cliff. It's very difficult to produce more. It's very difficult to continue producing what we've been producing. And it's very difficult to stay the course as a business. So many businesses start losing money. So what we're going to focus on now is how we strengthen the resilience of that ecosystem so that businesses can continue to thrive. Businesses, I'm talking about mostly SMEs that serve farmers. And the farmers themselves can continue to produce. We must focus on the resilience of agricultural systems. So, um, first of all, the challenge of women in the food system is extremely, uh, it's something we really take very seriously because women are a major contributor in the agricultural system. They are 65% of the public community. But women are the ones that suffer when children don't have food. Women suffer a lot when nutrition is impacted. Women suffer a lot getting businesses to get to, to move in the agricultural sector. So it, it's really, really important that we find ways to strengthen their engagement and their participation in the sector. They are quest there's no question around their role as sources of, as producers of food, as businesses, and as mothers trying to support us at home to ensure they get the right food. So the question of what their role is is not, not in question again, but the most important thing is what do we do about this? Which is my second question. So as Agro we are doing, I would say we are doing three things to focus on women in agriculture. One of the things we are extremely interested in is developing women leaders in agriculture. That is something we think is extremely important from research, leading in research, to leading in businesses, to leading in whatever you're doing as a woman. Finding those women leaders and supporting them to be the best they can is one of the things we are focusing on. 
we have created an institution which we call um, Center for Africa's Leaders, for African Leaders in Agriculture. We make sure that 50% of people that come in are women. We have a youth program now. 50% of the people we work with in that program will be women because we do recognize that young women must be empowered to, to be part of this ecosystem so they have the skills and the capabilities they need for them. More importantly, we have created a platform for women in business. In this platform, we have over 3,000 businesses. We call it Value for Her, where we are trying to understand what are the challenges that women businesses face and how can we support them to grow, to grow their markets, to grow their ecosystem, to grow the supply system that they, work, they are working with, and to be part of advancing women. So we also look at them as pulling other women in this ecosystem. If women uh, businesses are buying from women, this is something we definitely uh, encourage. I think, yeah. And, and then the last one, of course, is working with women farmers, where they are. We work with farmers anyway, smallholder businesses, work with farmers anyway just ensuring that we pay attention to women as farmers and ensuring that they have access to the knowledge they need. Just as we do for men, they have access to the, the means they need. And just being very intentional, recognizing that they are majority of the farming community. We must address the question of climate change. Land degradation happens with our agricultural system. In fact, when we don't use inputs, the right level of inputs, so that farmers get enough, when farmers don't use the right level of inputs, good seed, good fertilizers, they actually end up using more land. They leave the land they've been using and use more land. That's called land degradation. They leave the land that is degraded and approach and cut another piece of land so that they can use it. And that's happening at a very fast rate these days. We have to reverse that situation. At Agra, we are doing two things. We have a program we're calling Sustainable Land Management, which we're doing with Kitui County, and hopefully we can scale it to other counties. And we're doing uh, another program of regenerative agriculture, which none of this is in practice on the African continent. These are things we, we used to do in the past, but we haven't been putting a lot of emphasis on them. These are all beginning to show that we can actually reconstitute our land, rehabilitate our land, and use it to produce more. And maybe even recover our rains. So if we continue to work very hard, we can actually regenerate our environment. So those are some of the programs that we're focused on. And then we've introduced a very strong extension program using what we are calling real best advisors. And the center of this, at the center of this is land rehabilitation for climate purposes. We, we, our program is based on partnerships. As Agra, we really don't go out there to implement programs ourselves. We find partners, people who are already in the ecosystem that are already working. There are private sector that are already trying to make the agriculture sector happen. There are NGOs that are already trying to make the agriculture sector happen. And of course there's government. So our job is to try to understand the challenges that all these institutions and all these players that are trying and actors that are trying to make the ecosystem work, the challenges they have so that we can support them. And we support them with the resources where resources are the issue. We support them with technical assistance, where technical assistance is the issue. And we support with different types of capacities. Sometimes it's bringing people together. We have a huge convening called, called the, uh, the Africa Food Systems Forum. The purpose of that forum is to bring different players in the sector to ensure that they have the ability to talk and share knowledge around what's working, what's not working, and where they can get money, and where they can't get money from. And then in, inside there, we actually have a deal room that is meant to support businesses I have access to people that supply money. But in, at the center of all that, when partnerships are brought together, when governments are brought together with different players within the sector, everybody gets to understand where different resources are. And we have a lot of resources in the landscape. We just have to continue working very hard at coordinating and ensuring that we are connecting well so that these resources can come to fruition and can bear uh, more transformative results.